Welcome back to my channel. This is Bike Bike. And I'm going to do a real time install of a dropper post on a youth bike. This is a 24 inch wheel full suspension bike from Commensal. It's called the Clash 24. Uh, this is one of my son's bikes. Um, big ups to Commensal for making a ripping bike for younger guys. This bike's got 145 millimeters of travel front and back, which is pretty big for 24 inch wheels. So that's it's kind of their. Uh, enduro trail bike for youngsters uh, which is pretty baller really makes it more fun for the kids to ride where the adults ride that's not the point the point is you might not know how to install a dropper post and if you want to know how to install a dropper post you're gonna go online and when you go online you're gonna see a bunch of people install a bunch of different things and a bunch of different bikes and they're not all gonna be the same and my advice to anyone who wants to do their own mechanic work on their bike is to watch videos online, look up instructions online, and always look at more than one. If you can't find exactly your model, find something else that's similar. Or watch a few different models and figure out what types of things change and what types of things are always the same. Uh, there's really not that much to it. Um, I know enough now that I've taken droppers on and off different bikes and bled them and made new cables for them and blah, blah, blah. And pretty much the things that go wrong are always gonna be the same. And none of them are things during an install that you're gonna do that's gonna wreck the thing. So I'd say go ahead and give it a shot. So here we've got a RockShox Reverb that came off of an adult bike. Uh, it got a little bit squishy. So there was a screaming deal. You'll notice that in a different video where I installed a dropper post on a Tallboy 3. That dropper post that was replaced now can go on to my son's bike. Hand-me-downs, hand-me-downs. Uh, he's working a rigid post right now, so he's gonna be better off with a dropper than without even if it's a little bit squishy So I'm gonna go ahead and install this And we're gonna start by removing the old post this part everyone can probably do All right, see post out step one We're always gonna remember that step around step one is always to clean things Put a little alcohol in there, clean this tube as far as I can reach. I'm gonna set the post up. Same deal, just wanna get any grease or grime off of there. All right, nothing to it. Main thing to know if you're considering a dropper post and you don't already have one, um, it's a bummer if you don't have one already, um, is seat post diameter. Not all seat posts are the same. And if you're gonna have more than one bike, it can benefit you to consider the seat post diameter so that when you have multiple bikes, you can run the same size seat post. So, commence all Clash 24, 31.6 seat post. Santa Cruz bikes, which we tend to ride here, 31.6 uh, seat post, makes it really easy. One of my other sons has a specialized, and he runs like a 34.9 seat post, that makes it a problem. When we want to buy him something, we actually have to buy him something. We can't give him a hand-me-down. Um, and then there's also commonality. 31.6 is pretty common. You're gonna see that a lot. 30.9 is pretty common. 34.9, I don't see those as often. So if you want to get a good deal on parts, you want to always be rocking the mainstream parts. You want to have 31.6 or 30.9 seat posts. Uh, you want to have Right now, 27.5 inch wheels because everyone's going to 29ers. So you're gonna find all your screaming deals on the stuff where a lot has been made and you know there's not enough demand for that supply. If you have something really exotic or just a little bit on the exotic side, then there's not gonna be as many opportunities for cheap deals. So it's kind of a, a neat trick. So this is a stealth post. So. That means that the cable is gonna go inside the frame, which is super slick, uh, but some companies haven't figured out how to do that right. Commensal did a really good job. I'm gonna show you how they worked this out. Um, Santa Cruz does it pretty good where you can slide the cord through one side and pull it through the other way, and you'll hook them up. You can see that in my other video about the Tallboy 3 dropper post install. Um, Specialized, on the other hand, my other son's bike, it's a short travel stump jumper. You have to take the entire rear triangle off that bike to install a stealth dropper post. Now that is unacceptable. For a company like Specialized to put a bike out that has to have the rear triangle taken off to put a seat post on is ridiculous. 
especially a trail bike, a bike that clearly meant for a seat post. The only reason it doesn't come with one is because they're trying to get that price point. But it's totally implicit that you're gonna buy a seat post when you have that money. For a home mechanic to have to take a rear triangle off a bike is definitely a leap. It's the kind of thing, it's very, very doable. If you have a torque wrench, you got everything you need. But people are gonna avoid doing that. They're gonna end up going to the bike shop and the bike shop's gonna charge them through the nose to do that work. So I think that sucks, especially since it's clear that there's a lot of easier ways to do it. This one right here, this is definitely not an expensive bike. I'm not saying it's cheap, but as far as real mountain bikes with suspension, parts, you know, legitimate riding bike, not some sort of department store bike or an off the shelf bike, this isn't super high end. This is a $1,900 bike. Um, so for a full squish bike, uh, special size and things like that for kids, pretty good deal. But you know what? They had a very easy solution. I guarantee it wasn't that hard for them to do. And it makes it way easier for the user. So let's get this thing rolling. So before we can put this post in, we need to get the cable routed. That's step one. And how we're gonna route the cable on this bike, I'm gonna show it to you. Mm. Okay. First things first. Notice that I'm using a floor stand here. If you wanna put a dropper post in a bike, you can't hang the bike by the post. I do have a bike stand back there. It wouldn't make sense to hang the bike by the seat when I'm trying to change the seat. So it's cool to have these little floor posts in here. Um, anyway. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to use this sort of access port that commence all added to this bike. It's just a sort of plastic rubber with two bolts on it that, or screws rather, that holds this on and there's a little cut out here so that you can see inside the frame. Uh, a few brands have done this. It makes a lot of sense. There's no reason not to do it. And when you compare that to the bungle ups of having cords in there that you can't see and get to or taking the rear triangle off to put your dropper post in, it just makes sense. So I'm gonna hang this bike up on this rack here and then I'll reposition my camera and I'll show you how to take this off. That's a lie. I'm actually just gonna hang it upside down. expert camera work all right two little bolts they take a three millimeter allen key the way that I worked this out is I grabbed a two millimeter allen key it didn't fit then I grabbed a four millimeter allen key it didn't fit you just figure it out you're not gonna hurt anything by checking so real simple pop them in pro tip do not lose your screws they make these magnetic bowls for about eight or nine bucks. Those are super clutch. However, a lot of parts on bikes tend not to be magnetic. So the magnetic parts of that magnetic bowl kit doesn't really help, but just having a bowl or somewhere where you can put your parts. And if you're nervous about the job you're doing or doing something that has a lot of little pieces, then it's a good idea to lay out the parts, have a nice clean big table and put your parts out in the order they came off so you can really know where everything's at. You know, and then don't let anyone in your garage. So all we do is take this piece off. Now, we've got this nice little cut out there, which is gonna enable me to grab that cord when it comes down through the top, the down tube here, and then slam it right up the seat post tube. So this is gonna be pretty easy. So now I'm gonna hang the bike up. Well, if I'm being smart about this, I'm gonna use the seat post to do it. This guy will be back out in a minute. All right, let's see how we do this. So there's a little hole up here in the frame. It's always in the same spot on all frames, pretty much. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cable, 
that goes to the remote for the dropper post. And all we gotta do is slide that guy inside this and it goes in super smooth on this bike. What do you know? And then the easy trick is I just gotta get down where the port's at and then wait to see this guy come down through there. And sometimes it can be off to the side. So I got it already. I'm using my whole finger in there too. Commensal did a good enough job. They made a nice big port where you can actually put your fingers in there and grab the thing. So you don't have to do anything too clever. Sometimes you might need to use a, a little pick, like a coat hanger type deal, so you can get a handle on that cord. But we don't need that here. So I'm gonna pull through a little extra. I'm just gonna turn it right back around. I'm gonna look where the seat tube Seat, seat tube is, I'm gonna put, poke it right up there. All right, now, here. Now I'm gonna put my bike back on the ground because I don't need to see that little port anymore.